You are watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, how small improvements to your smile can make a big difference. We're also talking about dental health insurance and a new program that allows just about everyone uh, to be able to afford dental insurance. With us, uh, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Verheren. Dr. Verheren, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. All right, now before we get into today's topic, um, for people that don't know you, tell us a little bit about your practice, what are the different procedures you do, and who's the typical patient? Um, my practice is in Bremerton, Washington. I practice with two other doctors, Dr. Uh, David Kidd and Dr. Sonia Hamburg. And um, the practice is really centered around integrity, around core values. Okay. Uh, we really make it our purpose to do what we say and have a high degree of um, completing on promises and a high degree of satisfaction for our patients. Okay, good. And that's what we're really going for. If you're not happy in our place, we're not happy either. Because people don't like going to the dentist, right? Do they tell you that? Oh, yeah. Or what do they say? I mean, how I do mean, they say it? They say, I hate you. <laughs> what do you say to that? Well, generally, and then they say, well, it's not you. It's, it's coming here and having things in your mouth. When you think about it, your mouth is one of your most sensitive parts of your body. And someone else playing with that particular area is, yeah. is a little weird. And so there's a certain level of trust that you have to um, get established before you're going to be successful at really doing anything. And this gets back to your earlier question, yeah. who my patients are. My patients are everyone. All right. They go from uh, one years old all the way up to 99. Uh, I think the oldest is 102. Is <laughs> that right? Mm. And I have a couple at 100. And, you know, these are the really interesting people because they've been there and they've seen that, you know, and they've, they've been through it. And they, they still come in. The attitude is huge with them. They're, they're, they're really cool. But, yeah, to get back to your earlier uh, point, they start off saying, yeah, I hate you. Then they end up liking it. And they end up really creating that trust and that connection. And that's what's cool about being a dentist. One of the reasons why I invited you on the program to talk about your new dental health rewards. It's kind of like dental insurance. Mm -hmm. For about $35 a month, you do a lot of things. Tell $35 me about a month, we do all the preventative stuff. We do um, x-rays, exams, we do um, cleanings, and we also do fluoride. We do sealants if you need sealants. It's all included? That's for the $35 Is a month. Is that less than regular dental insurance? Um, yes. Okay. Not a lot, but some. It is, um, it is less. How is it different? I mean, we've talked in the green room. Mm -hmm. I'm calling it dental insurance. You say, no, it's not dental insurance. No. But it sounds like dental insurance to me. How is it different? Well, it's and closer, how is it better? Well, it's closer to a membership where it's an exclusive club. It's dental health rewards. Okay. So we don't just let anyone in. <laughs> All right. Now, what you have to do is you have to value dental health. And by valuing dental health, you need to be brushing and flossing. So you have to do your part in order for us to do our part and to be able to give you a break. So it's, it's a really a, a give and take. And while it's not dental insurance, it's because there's no third party. It's just me and the patient. There's, there's no other person saying, no, you can't do this procedure or this isn't going to work. Uh, there's no codes. I mean, yeah, we still code, but you don't have to submit codes to an insurance company. Your front desk doesn't have to like, get on you because you didn't submit the right code. It's much simpler. Now, dentists will watch this show. Yes. Other doctors will watch this show. Yes. What do you want them to know about this? Because that's a big thing. You also provide a program for other dentists locally to get involved. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, the, um, the thing with dentists right now is we're getting squeezed. I don't know if you know that there's not many general docs out there anymore that are on their own. No. Um, they have kind of become a dinosaur. And the reason they became a dinosaur is the insurance companies basically squeezed them out of existence. So they all have to band together in large groups. The same thing is going on in dental right now. Uh, you had Mark Cooper on your show, and he went into this quite a Dr. bit. Dr. Mark Cooper, yes. Um, this is happening right now. And so for general dentists out there, what they need to get is unless they do something, they are going to be going the way of the dinosaur, i.e. the solo general doc. Okay. So tying their practices into their patients on one-on-one -on -one is one way to do it and getting that value out of it and getting better results. Now you, you know, we talk in terms of, uh, you know, at the top of the show, how small improvements to the smile can make a big difference, but you've lowered the barrier. You've made dentistry affordable for people. Is that Not right? Not only affordable, yeah, but on different levels. Definitely affordable, but also more approachable. More approachable. And you have over 200 people on this dental health rewards program. Yes. Could, could, could we start, and I have a lot of questions about this, but 
uh, your basic pricing because so a business person, a family listening to this that has children, what are so give me the um, basics. So for three hundred seventy dollars is for the first person, first adult, which works out to be how much per month. Uh, we usually, um, if you're going to do a monthly, we do thirty-five dollars a month. Thirty-five dollars a month, okay, for the first person. Second person comes in at two seventy, which so is we how actually much? give them a break. Uh, monthly, it would be uh, twenty-five dollars. Okay, well that's inexpensive. What about children? Children come in at two ten for a whole year, and uh, twenty dollars um, for a monthly. So it's affordable. So, so local business. I mean, who do you want to take advantage of this? Ideally, we're really lo um, looking for people without insurance because people without insurance, if you go and try to get treatment, you basically have to pay more. And, the re and this happens in medical too, where if you go to an emergency room and you don't have insurance, the prices are astronomical. You actually need your insurance company to barter down the prices to make them more reasonable. Mm -hmm. So what this program does is we're going to give you that. We're going to give you that bartered down price. We're going to give you the fair price. And it, we're going to give it to you in, in such a way that it actually works better. It works you better say, for everyone. You say, because of this dental health rewards that you offer, and you have about 200 people in the program, mm -hmm. that you get better results than other dentists. Yes. Elaborate on that. I've uh, done studies with that population compared to uh, populations on um, traditional insurance programs that I also have in my practice. The patients that are in the program are much more highly, or much more um, motivated to get work done. Okay. So their treatment plans get completed. They're not lagging. They, they go through with the whole thing. Um, and their mouths are better. So you have an agreement that you, that you, about what you're going to give them for this $35 a month, approximately yes. $35 a month. And also they have to hold to their end of the bargain. Yes, they do. So what is it? Tell me about this relationship. The agreement really is that their part of the deal is they need to brush and floss. If they don't, yeah, we know. We can tell. Okay. What we also find, though, is that the people who make this promise are more likely to follow through with it, meaning that we're increasing the level of brushing and flossing just by making the promise. So how is this program that you've put together better? We know it's less expensive, mm -hmm. but do you get more? You definitely get more. Okay. Um, in traditional dental insurance, the, what you do is you try not to have people seen. That's how the insurance companies make money. Okay. They do their best to make it as difficult as possible to actually get the treatment. We're the opposite. We won't, don't even want to see you unless you're coming in. You need to do what you need to do to be healthy. So if they're going to be paying you your money, mm -hmm. this $35 a month, just as an example, you want to see them? Yeah. What, two times a year? At least. Okay. If it's a uh, gum disease, it's probably going to be four. All right. And it's a partnership. I mean, this isn't um, something that's just transactional. This is a relationship between us where they have their parts, they have ours, and the results are phenomenal. Better results. Oh, absolutely. Now, I mean, t the fact that dentists haven't kind of gotten, you know, it's so hard to get people to brush and floss, and we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's a tough sell. You really got to choose it. Prevention is a tough sell. Prevention is a tough sell. And why is that? People want to be out of symptoms. People they don't care be... about the future, I guess, sometimes. Exactly. Or so, they don't think about the consequences. So we're setting up a whole system where they're going to be successful because we're bringing consequences back in. Consequences is they have to pay more if they don't brush and floss. Now you have a lot of ben There's a lot of benefits, actually, going to your particular practice. I mean, you have a machine that makes crowns right then and there in the day. Let's talk we, about we technology have the, in your practice. The CEREC, which I absolutely love. Um, because I can... What is it? First of all, what is it's it? It's a machine that will do a CAD CAM system and make a crown there in the office. I can make a crown in two hours. Okay. And this crown that I make is made out of porcelain. Uh, the strength is good. The aesthetics are great. Sensitivity is minimal. I mean, and these things feel good and they look good. Um, they are How is it normally done, by the way? You, um, you prep a tooth and then you take impressions with gooey stuff and this gooey stuff kind of gets all over everything. Uh, then that goes off to a laboratory. The laboratory takes three weeks to make the permanent. In the um, meantime, what you're doing is you're putting a temporary crown on that, which invariably leaks and is sensitive. The gum tissue around the tooth isn't very happy about that. So we're able to short circuit all that, have people in and out in two hours, and have something beautiful that's long lasting, functions well, and 
it's actually a blast to me. Too. How do you avoid, though, the impression material, the goop that you put it's them in? It's an out? optical impression. So the impression is basically a camera, and the camera takes pictures. And you wouldn't think it'd be a that accurate. A camera in their mouth? Yeah. Like a wand kind well, of yeah, camera? Yeah, it's a little bigger than that one. Okay. But um, it's about yay big. We can get it in most mouths. There's a couple that we have some problems with. But um, the uh, accuracy is like 10 microns. What, a better fitting crown? Is that what you're saying when you say accuracy? Comparable. Okay. It's as good as a lab. All right. And so much quicker. Well, it's, it's convenient, I guess. It's better than convenient. <laughs> I mean, because it feels good. It feels good to have that thing in there. It's, it's safe. It's secure. It's, it's a good crown. What else do you have as far as technology that most guys don't have? Um, you know, technology always is shifting so quickly. We do have uh, soft tissue lasers which are great for um, gum disease that won't respond to anything else um, as a, uh, an effort to uh, change the uh, floral uh, bacteria that's down in the bottom of the pocket. Um, we have some cameras that help you see into your mouth so you can see the problem as well. They're great tools for communication so you can kind of get... So you take a picture of the inside of their mouth. Yes. And I've seen videos of this and then they get to see their oh, yeah. tooth that might have a crack Mm -hmm. right there in front of them? So you have TVs or yes. screens that they look at right there? Mm -hmm. Oh, we have screens. Why is that throughout. important, by the way? You know, it's How just, does that help it's, things along? The, it doesn't help me in diagnosing or treating, but it helps them to realize what's going on. I mean, because if you see it, it becomes real. If you hear it from me, it's like, See what? Uh, I, mean, I mean, what are they going to see? They're going to see a big crack going down the side of their tooth, and they're going to imagine every time they bite down on it, they're going to see a little flexure. Interesting. And at some point, it's going to give way. Helps them buy into treatment. And if it gives way the wrong way, we're going to have to pull the tooth. Okay. okay. What else do you have in your office? Um, well, we're um, um, digital x-rays, so about 80% uh, less radiation than uh, normal x-rays. Uh, we're paperless, um, so we have monitors, everything, charts are, are all um, on the computers. So back to the... The dental health rewards, mm -hmm. this insurance, it, it's like dental insurance, but a little bit less, and you get more for it mm -hmm. that you've created. What are the categories of people that should take advantage of this? Well, definitely people without insurance, but even people with insurance should really look at the kind of deal they're getting and see whether it makes more sense to do something like this. Uh, other dentists really want to look at incorporating this into their practices because this is going to make a powerful tool to get better results and increase their bottom line. Okay, but let's talk to those. So the patients without insurance, this is a way to get dental insurance. Mm -hmm. And the people that have dental insurance, what do they normally pay? Um, probably about $50 a month. $50 a month. Uh -huh. Okay, this goes for 50 anybody. to 70. It 50 really to 70 depends. a month. Yeah. And what they're getting is just cleanings, and they're getting what? They're usually getting a percentage. So they'll, they'll get $1,000 a year. 1000 a year. Or 1200 It kind of depends a little bit. Okay. On, on how much you're spending out. So the payout of the year is maximum $1,200 in a lot of these And policies. if you look at the amount that they're paying each month and the amount of benefit, it generally doesn't hook up. Okay. Meaning that they make more money than they pay out. And they're an insurance company. They have to. So if you try to buy insurance on your own, it's not going to work. Okay. It just doesn't work out. Do you think they're numbers. harder to reach? Because you, like you said at the top of the show, you, you really want to reach out to the people with no insurance. But if the people with insurance knew what was available, they would switch. In your opinion, well, if they saw the pros and cons, they would all switch to what you have? In your opinion? It's, it's definitely a better system. Okay. Um, you know, and this, this gets into the next category of employers. Because there's people out there making decisions on what your dental health insurance is going to be. And are they buying something that actually makes sense? Or are they buying something that just they're doing it because it's always been done this way? All right. So what does the employer need to know about dental insurance? Um, and how this is different? The employer needs to know that dental insurance encourages their employees not to seek treatment. Okay. And this does. What does that mean? I don't know what you mean when you say it encourages them not to seek treatment. Not to come to the dental office. Why? I, I don't get it. I don't get that part. Because they make money when people don't get treatment. Okay. When they do get treatment and they use their benefits, the insurance company isn't making money. So they make it as hard as possible Okay. and, and expensive good. as possible. How do they make it hard? They have codes that they will say, well, we'll pay for this, we won't pay for that. 
procedures um, that they may or may not pay for. You have to pre-authorize certain procedures. So it may be an additional back and forth to the de dentist? Oh, God, yes. To see what's covered? Yes. Okay, where with yours, well, no, it's it's we we can decide with the patient right there what needs okay. to happen. You, now, so, so for the employers, if they want to get involved, they call you directly. They call your office. Yes. Say I'm an employer. Uh huh. And we'll take it from there, and we'll show them that this is the, the program for them. Small, medium, large companies. Um, at this point, this? we're going to go small, perhaps a medium. A large company is going to have more than we as an office can handle right now. Okay. But we're hoping to grow this program and to be a lot bigger. So more and more doctors are going to offer this. Yes. Dental health rewards. Yes. And they so so talking to the doctors again. So the doctors, the, the dentists that are watching this and want to get involved, what you set up the paperwork, the program, uh, everything for them? Yes. And getting it into the culture of their office is really the toughest part. To say that we're gonna do this because a lot of different people have to be on board. Your front desk needs to be on board. Your assistants need to be on board. You need to be on board, so everybody really ha needs to have an understanding of how the program works before it's going to be successful, and that's where we can help you. Okay, good. Now, you also offer discounts when, let's say they want porcelain veneers, or they want dental implants, or whatever. So any procedure that. that's beyond the preventative, we give a 20% discount. And that doesn't matter whether it's quote-unquote aesthetic or um, optional or whatever. It's, it's like, okay, this is a procedure that we're going to do. Yeah, you get 20% off. Now, what, uh, we talked on the phone, you say, but Randy, we make less money doing it oftentimes this way. Yes. So what's the benefit for the dentist? The benefit for the dentist is you get better outcomes. You're, you get a partner in it. You also get to not be controlled by the insurance company. Okay. Okay. So it's a lot more freedom there. But ultimately, they may make more money because of the fact that now you have more people coming to the dentist, more people that maybe want to get some of these cosmetic procedures. Is that and, true? Is there truth in that? Oh yeah, and they actually get to regain control of their fee schedule. They don't have control of their fee schedule right now. Elaborate the insurance on that. What companies do you mean? dictate it. Okay. So if you go to a dentist who is a PPO provider, uh, per, um, he will have a set amount that he gets for each procedure. And um, that set amount is all you get. They haven't raised that in four years. Okay. You know, costs keep on going up, but the insurance companies aren't paying anymore. Okay. Now, they're giving their people less benefit and increasing the amount that they charge businesses, but they're just keeping more of it. And what, now, when, you're, when you get on a plane... Insurance companies are going to get me, aren't they? Well, when you come <laughs> here, what's your main message? Like, what did you want? You say, look, I want people to know this about my dental health rewards program. Mm -hmm. The main message that I'm really trying to get by, and it may be a little dry, but is accountability, is that having people involved in their own health is the only way to succeed. So what frustrates you the most? So the toughest thing that you have to get across about your dental health rewards, or dentistry in general as far as prevention, insurance, and the way it's going? Um, what frustrates me the most is patients that don't get it. And what they don't get is it's all about their health and their health is jeopardized when they're not on board with what they're doing. So, i.e., you're not brushing, you're not flossing, you're jeopardizing your health. Um, Aren't most people brushing and flossing? 50% of adults are not flossing. Okay. If you floss, it's been, um, through studies, it's been um, shown that you gain 6.5 years of life. Really? Yes, and I think if you uh, quit smoking, you only get eight. <laughs> So, so flossing it's comparable. makes that big of a difference. Yeah. So and people who floss live 6.5 years longer. So are you like health coaches there in a way? Oh, definitely. I mean, we're healthcare providers. When you come down to it, we have a specific area of the mouth, but our area is so important. It provides a window for looking at disease. We can see what's going on inside you by looking inside your mouth. Um, it will tell us early warning things of different things of um, like diseases. Uh, periodontal disease, heart disease has been linked. Periodontal disease and Alzheimer's have been linked. Meaning so it is a bacterial infection in the mouth, gum disease, is gum that right? Gum disease is totally a bacterial infection. And yes. you kill that gum disease with a laser, with uh, microbials, what is it? Um, gum disease is tough because you can't do it yourself. You can't get down there. 
You know, you can, you can try all you want, you can take things, but you won't get into the physical space of that pocket. You have to get in there and get that. The pocket out. means what? The space around the tooth? The space between the gum and the tooth. Okay. And unless you do that, you're going to have disease because that disease lives down there. It likes it down there. So you got to really get in there and make it an area where the bacteria doesn't like to live there. So you clean it out at the dental office, yes. and then mm -hmm. you make sure that when they're at home, they're they got to do their part. They're doing their part. Because if they don't do their part, we're spinning our wheels a little bit. We're still going to lose teeth. If they're doing their part, we're going to save your mouth. Okay, good. So dental health rewards lowers the barriers, gets more people into the dentist. Exactly. Uh, and are there any? Is there any statistical information about how many people don't go to the dentist? Yes. Because yes, you sure said 50% of the people don't floss. Yes. Are there 50% of the people it's, only it's see like the dentist when there's a problem? It's like 43 percent of people will only see the dentist when there's a problem. And then it costs more money. More money and lifestyle. You know, often they lose a tooth, and are they going to go for the implant? Yeah. And often they say no. How important is a smile? You're a dentist. You probably think it's pretty important. How important is it? Somebody watching this, maybe they don't like their teeth. They've, they've let it go, mm -hmm. whatever. So they're not smiling because of it. But how important is a smile? Well, the thing to get about the smile is that facial expressions in general are not just, you know, what you put on. They're communication. So your smile really is your communication to the world. And it can't get any bigger than that. All right. Well, it's right in the middle of your face. Yeah. I mean, your communication. How, you, you talk about how you talk, but um, the smile is, is um, for humans, it's, it's huge. It's, Do you see transformations in your practice oh, where yes. people, you take care of their smile and then they're acting differently or they tell you stories? I've had people cry in my chair. Good cry. Really? <laughs> Not like the what? bad cry. Like it's just what? ball because they've been taken and they had horrible teeth all their lives and you give them something that just looks fabulous and they don't know what to do and it changes their life. Do you attract the kind of patient that is like that? Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. You seem to get a lot of these, what are, are they dental phobics? I mean, what do you call them if you had to label them? Just people afraid of the dentist? Um, people that um, really haven't know that it's possible and what's possible. Okay. I Good. mean, you look at the possibilities and as long as you're not dead, there's a lot we can do. <laughs> okay. Dental health rewards, and we're out of time, but dental health rewards, we're talking about, it, it, it's like dental insurance for mm -hmm. about $35, $25 for the second person in the family. The kids are even less. How much are the kids? I didn't even ask you about that. Uh, $20. $20. And the kids get cleanings and they get uh, sealants. Cleaning, Is that included sealants. as well? You know, the interesting thing about the kids is that kids are notorious for not taking very good care of their teeth. But if, you know, I sit them down in the chair and they tell me they're not flossing. They're truthful. Everyone's pretty truthful. Oh, really? They say I'm not flossing. Okay. Or they'll say that I'm flossing, you know, and we know that they're not because we can look in there and we see plaque, we see bacteria. Okay. Um, what they really get is I say, hey, you know, maybe this program isn't for you. It's going to charge you. I'm going to have to charge your parents more. Let's see what they say about that. And they come in six months, they've been flossing. Is that right? And the difference in health is amazing. I mean, can you imagine if you had this kind of situation when you're young, you wouldn't get the fillings that you have that then get old and have to be crowns? It short circuits a lot of things. If so the kids, if you it. start them young, talking to parents right now about this uh, dental health rewards, you start them young, they're, they're going to be great. They're, they're not going to have problems. They still have to watch out for gum disease later on. But as far as cavities, if you can get them through that, I mean, it's, it's really not an issue. So kids, adults, everybody should get involved. Yes. I mean, people, especially in this economy, right, or any economy, if you want to save money, this is a, a way to save money. It's expensive not to. What are your friends that are dentists? What could they argue about this when they say, I don't know about doing this in my practice? Um, dentists, as a lot, are, tend to be rather conservative. Um, so it's tough sometimes to get them to move, but it makes sense because they're really big on outcomes too. Um, people don't go into dentistry per se because they want to be rich. Okay. They go into dentistry because they want to connect with people, and this provides a deeper connection. It, and, and do you think it locks, it, locks in people to their dentist? And oh, definitely. Locks in people to be proactive about their... You right know. now we have a very much a shopper mentality out there where people will shop around for the best price and I can get a crown over here for this price or, or something like that. And it by, uh, bypasses that whole um, sort of mentality where, no, this is where I go. 
I know they're going to treat me right. I know it's a good deal. And I know Dr. So-and-so is my doctor. So dental health rewards get involved. You know, if you have traditional dental insurance, okay, you don't have to go to the dentist. A year, two years, three years, right? No, they prefer you not to. Okay, but, but, but you don't have to go to the insurance. In your case, you could cancel someone if they don't come in for their six-month cleaning. So I think, is that true? And we will. And you will. So it, there's an accountability where people, it forces people to take care of their teeth. Yes. Now, and I've bad-mouthed insurance a bit, and I should backtrack a little bit. Okay. Because insurance really is there for a reason, and there's some good people out there, and there's some good insurance programs. But I think even then, the insurance programs could be modified to bring accountability in, and they haven't done it yet. That'd be interesting. What if the insurance companies are watching this and they're saying, you know what, we should make it to where you have to brush and floss, you have to show up every six months. They could do that. Yes. And but they're not going to do that anytime soon, probably. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they will. Okay, good. But, but you're doing it. Um, final message. Somebody watching this, they want to know more about this dental health rewards. Uh, this low-cost dental, it's like dental insurance. I keep calling mm-hmm. it dental insurance, but it's different. They want to find out more. Where do they go? Uh, just give us a call. We're, we're going to make it happen for you. Is there an initial upfront cost? or? Um, no, it's, um, well. So you have a choice between paying. We have a, a choice between paying a, a full year and, or paying monthly. The full year is going to be a little cheaper. Okay, good. And, and everybody should get involved. And dentists that are watching this show, they just call you Dennis, directly. give me a call, and um, we'll see what we can do for your office and see how we can get you involved and get you going. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Very interesting. Great information. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, you can visit our website, and you could put in dental insurance. You could put in dental health rewards. You could put in Dr. Verheren's name. You'll find him there. For now, I wish you good help.